With the new X series of scratch-offs from the New York Lottery, you can multiply your winnings up to 100 times. The X series from the New York Lottery, it's a better way to multiply. You must be 18 years or older to purchase. Please play responsibly. On this week's episode of Bill's Pod Squad, Bill's legend Cornelius Bennett joins us to share why he hasn't been this excited about a Bill's team since his playing career, discusses similarities between Marv Levy and Sean McDermott, and gets into how the 88 Bills learned from their AFC Championship loss and turned it into four straight Super Bowl appearances. All that and more as Bill's Pod Squad starts right now. Welcome into Bill's Pod Squad, presented by the New York Lottery. Maddie Gladman, Bill's owner and president. Kim Pagula here is your host. Bill's Pod Squad is a podcast that connects you with our current players, Bill's legends, and beyond. Today, we have Bill's legend Cornelius Bennett on with us, who played for the Bills for nine seasons. He gets into his playing days, some of the tough losses, and how this current Bills team can learn from their AFC Championship loss to the Chiefs. Kim, as we look back on this 2020 season and we're starting to close out this year and look forward to what's ahead, it's not the ending that we were hoping for, but there's still a heck of a lot to be proud of with the way this team competed and got through a season really unlike any others. So as we're a few days removed from the loss, how are you feeling just about the game in general and the playoff run that the Bills had this season? (sighs) It still hurts, Maddie. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Feel, yeah. Still, uh, um, uh, so close. I mean, like, so, so close. I know. I just, I, I have to keep reminding myself of all the positives. I give myself like these motivational self-help speeches to myself. <laughs> um, so, but like you said, I mean, there is, you know, you, you just sometimes you're like doing something right, and then just you're like, oh my god, it's just like out of nowhere. All of a sudden, it's like, oh. We were just so close. Um, and then you, you know, you remember like, listen, you know how many teams would love, love to have been gone all the way to the FC championship game. And the fact that we hadn't had a loss since Arizona, and you know, like just there, you know, you start now just reflecting on everything. And there are certainly so many highlights and so many things to be proud of. So many things, just a lot of great fond memories in a crazy year that we've had. Um, so, you know, I actually, one of my, on my list of things to do is I, I want to go back and recap all of this in one of those like photo books, you know, that you put together, like yeah. of a vacation or something, because yes. this is such on um, you know, not just the wins, but just the, just the whole year has been so incredible, so different, so memorable. I was like, oh, this is one of those things where I got to make a photo book and just go back and just put in all these pictures. Cause you know, I'm sure I, I feel like I'm never going to forget this. But I'm sure that like 20 years from now, I probably will forget it because I'll be like, you know, whatever, 80 years old. So, <laughs> so I'm like, I need to immortalize this, mortalize it, immortalize it uh, in some way. So it's still on my list of things to do. But, but yeah, what I mean, I, I mean, it's just, it's just such, you know, one minute I'm like so relieved. I'm like, oh, no more daily testing, no more this, no more that. But then on the other hand, you're just like. Oh, but, you know, excited, you know, about next year, right? It's just, we just got to get through the Super Bowl because that's where I'm like, okay, after that game is played, it's all about the next season. So Mm -hmm. only have a few more days and then it's all about next season. So I... Sorry, no, I don't have any real answer for you, Maddie, except I am all over the place. I feel like the way that you just explained how you're feeling is how all of Bill's mafia is feeling and how all of our listeners will feel because that's how I feel too. I mean, it comes in waves. I think the night of the loss, I was literally in disbelief um, because we had to do the post game show. And so I had to like collect myself and, and do the show and do all that stuff. And we got done super late. And in my mind, like we were going to the Super Bowl, no matter, like there was not an ounce of me thinking that we would have lost that game to the Chiefs. So I was like in shock because I never thought it was going to happen. I didn't prepare for it at all until after it happened. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely the the waves, the ups and downs of, of going through a loss like that. But I think one thing that helped me was some of the players spoke to media on their locker clean out day, which has to be like my worst favorite day in the year, mm-hmm. um, especially when we're there in person, because watching the guys clean out their locker after a season, after a loss, is just like 
heartbreaking because you can see how bummed they are to to close out the season and how much they wanted to play but seeing them virtually it, it didn't have that much of a, of a sad impact but they really brought like a great presence to those virtual interviews that they did to close out the season and the way that they commanded themselves and, and understood and, and were upset with how the season ended but also knowing how awesome the season was at the same time and how much there is really to be proud of and how many great things you can hang your hat on made me feel a little bit better and I was like okay <laughs> if our players are thinking this way and like they're definitely not okay with how the season ended but they can also think about the positives and they're already looking towards next year and all the work that has to be done like I can put my foot forward and and be like this as well but when you look back on it all like before training camp, before we knew that we were going to do training camp in Buffalo, before we knew that, you know what, we would have a season because there were a couple weeks where there nothing was set in stone. Everything was up in the air. We didn't know if sports were going to happen. We didn't know how it was going to look. All these protocols had to be put in place. What did you learn about this season and how mm. football, how the NBA, how the MLB, how the NHL, can happen during a pandemic and, and it can happen successfully and be a light for so many people. I think yeah. the season was an escape for everybody in a lot of different ways. Oh, uh, I, you know, I, I learned, a, I learned a lot. I mean, I, I would say probably one of the biggest thing is just, you know, you never know what you're capable of until you have to do it. Right. So, you know, listen, it would be nice if we all thought that, you know, we could, we, feel the right way, we want to do the right things, we we can do all this stuff. But when you don't have to do it, you know, it, it you you get rusty, right? You don't realize that that um, you have that within you. And I think if, if anything else, this season has taught us that, you know, even though we were forced to do it, like we're a lot stronger than maybe we thought. You know, we we don't need as much things or or much as much stuff as my husband likes to say, um, as we thought we did, right? And we can do a lot more with a lot less um, and still have a great result. Um, I, I think you know, as you know, sometimes complacency kind of breeds this kind of you know, you just the same old thing and you just more, you add more, you keep adding more and more and more. Um, and maybe sometimes quality or, or focus kind of, you know, changes this year, you know, when you get things taken away from you, you appreciate things so much more when you don't, when your back um, is against the wall, you, you know, you figure out how to, to move forward. And I think those are all just great lessons that you always want to, you know, to be able to learn and experience in life. Um, but this year with the pandemic, with the way the season went with, all of that going on in this world, um, I, I just I think it was such a year of great learning um, about yourself, about your teammate, about your organization, about your league, um, about our country. Just um, you know, it just was such a a year of of I don't know of learning, I, I guess. Um, and like I said, I mean, props to the league, you know, to all the leagues for really finding a way. Uh, to get a season off. And I know that when we were in that kind of everyone was shut down, there was no sports for months. Um, but how much sports is just such a fabric of our of our way of life and, and the, the psyche of, of what it brings to us. And, and then when you have a team that performed above and beyond what, you know, was going on in the world, um, you know, how, how much joy. And I think that's the one where like, it just brought so much joy to our whole Buffalo family, not here in Western New York, but across the country. So it was just, yeah, just a lot of learnings, a lot of just great memories. And, you know, do I want to do it again? No, <laughs> I did not want to do it again in, in that way. But, um, but like happy that, you know, there's just a lot of things, I, great takeaways that um, I am not going to forget anytime soon. Yeah, speaking of those great takeaways and the positive highlights, we've gotten the sad part out of the way. What are some of the things that you're going to take away from this season that just make you proud of the coaching staff that you've hired, proud 
of the players that are here in Buffalo uh, and excited for next season already. Yeah, you know what, I guess what I'm going to take away is the fact that this is, you know, the foundation has been laid, right? And we talk, I know Brandon talks a lot about it. I talk a lot about it, the consistency. And, you know, as we will hear from Cornelius and we've heard from Thurman and, and all the other alums from back in those, those 90s team, that core group, like that's where that, you know, that's the beginning. And while we're not, we don't, we're not rebuilding, we're not starting fresh, but I think we have such a great foundation. Um, if we, if this group, this, this team, and yes, guys are going to kind of come in and out and, you know, there's going to be some tweaks and changes, but this group, this, this, the people that are here, like they really built such a great foundation to build on to adapt from and if we can if it was our rock this year and in times of challenging times it just bodes so well going forward um that we have that consistency we know what the what the end goal is we were we were almost there like you can feel it you know i just mm -hmm. i think i i think back to some of you know um we weren't obviously our ownership wasn't here for all the 17 years you know of that playoff drought uh but when you when you don't know what you you know, when you don't know it, right? It's, it's a lot easier to detach yourself. Well, our guys know now how close it is and they, they know and they can take that away. Um, so I just, you know, I just learned that, you know, we're, we've arrived, I don't, I, you know, and I don't mean that, I don't mean that in a uh, brag, bragging way because, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't win the, um, the Lombardi trophy, but I think we've arrived in terms of, knowing who we are as an organization, knowing who we are as a team, um, you know, really truly understanding the goals that, that we have. Um, and we have the people in place from a consistency standpoint to, to get us going even more in, in that direction. So I'm looking forward to next year. <laughs> Me too. I'm already ready for like week one or the preseason or training camp, but I know everybody deserves a nice big break after what we all went through this season and, and all the hoops and challenges that we faced uh, just to get through the playoffs and through the season as a whole. But somebody who knew a lot about consistency during his Buffalo Bills days is Cornelius Bennett. He was a five-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-American, or three-time first-team All-Pro, was an All-American in his college football playing days at the University of Alabama, had 52 and a half sacks, 22 forced fumbles, had a great career with the Buffalo Bills. So here's Cornelius. Cornelius and Fred and Erna's Biscuit, thank you so much for being on with us on this podcast today as we wrap up the 2020 season. Of course, it wasn't the end that we all expected or hoped for. I know we all hoped that we were moving on to the Super Bowl with just such a talented roster and, and a great team. But alas, it ended at the AFC Championship game, which just means this team has a lot more left in store and, and can build and can look to next season as, as a season that they can accomplish this goal. But just being uh, someone who's been able to watch this team, a former Buffalo Bill yourself, what did you think of the season that the Bills had? They won 15 total games. They had the franchise record for most points scored in a season, 501, which is not easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your thoughts on their season as a whole? That's a tremendous, um, tremendous season. You know, you don't get a chance to, to go 13 and three regular season uh, that often. And um, um, to come together, especially during this trying time, that's to me, that's, that's the most remarkable uh, part of all of everything that happened for the team this year. Uh, um, as we were talking off air about the young guys coming in and buying in right away and not having a chance to uh, really get a sense of, of, of what Buffalo is all about, uh, but to buy in and, and to go out and, and, and do what they're supposed to do and to get to a point to where you are in the AFC championship game and, and they accomplished it. And I'm so proud. Uh, I haven't been this. I, I told Bruce um, the morning of the game before the game um, Sunday that I haven't felt this way since I left Buffalo uh, about the team. And uh, so I guess it's a tremendous uh, tribute to, you know, to the team and, and coach McDermott and, 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 and Ms. Pakuya uh, and, and uh, the rest of Buffalo, because it's just a tremendous 
tremendous feeling. Claudius, how do you how do you watch the game now? Now that mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're like uh, we had Thurman on, he says I'm just a fan, right? And, mm -hmm. and he's watching the game. Do you when you were watching the games this season? You know, do you analyze the positions? Or are you you know being the the, the coach on the on the couch? <laughs> um, are you just enjoying it as a fan and just cheering on and not just looking for that excitement? How how do you now approach mm -hmm. the game? Um, you know, kind of now not being uh, on, on a team and a player, but like being just a fan. Well, until until this year, believe it or not, I just I hardly even watched a lot of football, but it was so exciting uh, this year. So I didn't want to miss a game. So I, I, I watched every game this year. And um, towards the end of the year, I did start finding myself uh, critiquing a little bit, <laughs> especially, you know, especially watching my old physician, uh, Daryl and I, Daryl Talley and I would, would often tweet uh, call each other and and critiquing kids, you know the kids. Uh, but um, it was fun um, to be able to do that, and especially um, not watching, you know, past teams or whatever. You know, we're still critiquing, but knowing that at the end of the day, we we're probably going to win the football game. So that's a that's a great great feeling to have. <laughs> Speaking of critiquing the position uh -huh. and, and looking at the linebackers and the defensive line, what do you think of the evolution of that position since you played in the NFL? It's, it's man, it has evolved. Um, you know, now you get, you know, Bruce, Bruce was, he and Reggie White were the standards and still are, you know, but, but those, they were fairly, they weren't big as guys are now. Your nine seasons that you played in Buffalo and for the mm -hmm. Bills, you got to play for a legendary coach in Marv Levy. And I, and I know before when we've had conversations, you have compared him or you've compared Sean McDermott to maybe some of the coaching styles that you knew uh, from Marv Levy. So what do you see in those two coaches? How do you see them kind of overlap and, and intertwine with what you've seen from Sean McDermott in the four years that he's now been the head coach of the Bills? The, the number one thing is um, how they are able to separate being a coach and being a great human being. Uh, and and, and uh, my, my words for Coach Levy has never been short. I, I love him like uh, a father. And that saves a lot. You know, I've had some, some good coaches in my time over my, you know, my career, whatever. But that's the only one that I could say that I love like a father. And I love the way he coached, how he treated us. And seeing Sean and meeting him when he first got the job and he brought us old heads in and we sat on head and broke bread together. I sensed that right away um, that he's more, you know, he's a, he's a great coach, but he's a better human being. And that's the one thing that I think um, if you talk to the kids on the team right now that they will say about him. And that's a sign of a great communicator, a great, you know, just an overall human being, you don't, you don't, you don't become a great human being, you know, just pretend or whatever. That's something you, you know, you're born with. And, and he has those qualities. And um, I, as a former player, I would love to have had a chance to play for a coach like him as well. You know, uh, so, you know, after, obviously we weren't in the same position getting, getting to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. but after, you know, as you talk about coach Levy, you know, kind of how did he approach you or what did he say to you guys after a loss that maybe, you know, probably probably similar to maybe what, what Coach McDermott has said to his guys after, you know, the, the AFC championship game? Yeah, the, definitely. The work is not done. You know, it's a great, you know, uh, uh, stepping stone. Um, you, you, know, you go back and, and you evaluate, you know, your good and the bad from the past season or whatever, and you build from the good and the bad and come back with the attitude of, of, you know, being a better football team, being better people. And um, I think uh, if, if the kids listen and take those words um, and, and do exactly what he's saying, grow from them, uh, we'll be back and we'll be back stronger than, than we were last year or this past season. And um, hopefully we get on another great roll like that because it's fun. I'm telling you, uh, um, Miss Kim, it is a fun ride. Even though we never won a Super Bowl, that's a fun ride to be on. And um, hopefully the kids, they got a taste of it. Um, looking at Stefan Diggs standing out on the field by himself, that that really moved me. That really moved me, um, honestly, uh, because he gets it. He gets it. And you now, now you have to get the other 52 guys uh, to get it. And when, and when they do, uh, after our 88 season, I don't know if everybody got it, you know, after our first loss in the AFC Championship game. But after that, guys got it. 
and that's where the ride started and that's when it was fun because we were all on the ride together. Well, I know a lot of former players, they remember the big wins, but you also mm -hmm. remember the big losses, the losses that really hurt and kind of define what's to come for the season ahead. And, and I think about the 1988 AFC championship game, the, the game that you guys lost, the final AFC championship game that you lost before then you went on to win four straight just two seasons later. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about that loss and, and how did it fuel your team into being the team that the Bills are known for? Mm -hmm. Well, 88, that was a, that was the beginning for us. You know, we were just coming together uh, again, what I talked about earlier about uh, buying in. I don't think everybody on that 88 team bought into what coach Levy was selling um, and, um, so that was, that was something that, um, I, I took from it as far as I'm trying to uh, become a better, uh, um, teammate, you know, all of us are talented, you don't make it to the NFL without being talented. Um, so, you know, being a better teammate to me, the locker room part of it, uh, wasn't there and it showed, you know, we were the bickering bills, um, after that, you know, we had some disturbances in the locker room or what have you, but, uh, coach Levy and management did what they had to do to solve those issues and then we did we took it upon ourselves as players that's when the closeness began um you know we we we, we relied on each other during not only during the season but during the off season and and uh, we became a team just interested in kind of where your, your life went after football back down south yeah i um so when i when i first um, retired from football i, I you know, took a, took a year or two off and, you know, just healed up my body from playing for 14 years. And I had a young family at the time. And uh, so after that, um, I decided to jump in head over heels with our, with our players association. So I did 13 years of that. Um, I was a two-time chairman of our former players board of directors. I was involved in the um, 2011 during the lockout uh, as a chairman and Help set up a lot of programs for former players. And she, you know, you, you may mention the former players, the trust. I played a big part in that. Um, I was the chairman doing all of that. And um, a lot of the things that's happening with um, former players, I, you know, was very vocal about um, the legacy benefit, which you're familiar with, um, that, that, that new benefit, all those things. Um, I had a hand in that. And I'm so grateful that um, I was I elected to the position of, you know, leadership position because that was something that um, I, I, you know, felt strongly about. And until this day, I'm a big advocate for former players and, and I had a great conversation with Bruce about some benefits uh, just yesterday. Uh, they all call me uh, because they know I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, astute uh, when it comes to our benefits and whatever. So, but now uh, I'm just an old granddad. I have a, a, a two-year-old grandbaby or well, three, I'm sorry. She's three now. She was three Christmas day. And, uh, I'm just a peepaw, <laughs> enjoying <laughs> life. My wife and I, we're empty nesters, and I'm just enjoying life. Uh, I'm a deacon in the church. That's uh, I became a deacon in our church um, in, in October uh, 2019. So I'm, I'm very you know active in our church here. Uh, that's one thing I'm most proud of now, uh, being a deacon. Yeah. I think a lot of people once they leave the NFL, whether it, whether they retire um, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a lot of players want to still be connected to the league in, in some type of way, whether that's working in a leadership position like you or whether that's working in a different department or maybe you go on to being a coach or working in the scouting department or working your way up through the front office somehow. But why did you want to um, stay connected with the league, but specifically stay connected with former players and make sure they were you know, receiving the right benefits and being treated as they should as former players of, of such a prestigious league to be a part of. Well, Ken Hall was was our, our leader in our locker room as far as the union was concerned. So that's how I really got my feet wet. Um, uh, and then when I went to Atlanta, uh, I became an alternate uh, rep uh, and the same thing in Indianapolis. And But my father working 33 years at U.S. Steel, um, I know the help that he got from his union mates. My father only had a sixth grade education. So a lot of times um, he had to rely on his union when, 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 you know, when things got a little harsh or whatever, especially in the late in the mid eighties, when U.S. Steel was uh, uh, laying off a lot of workers or whatever. So it was the union that really looked out for him. So that part of it always um, stood out for me. And I guess that's why 
Um, I decided because I know the help that he received from the union and uh, I wanted to be a voice. What has it been like to reconnect? And I know you guys really stay connected all the time. So what is the relationship like that you still currently have with a lot of those guys on the team and maybe how it even increased a little bit this season mm -hmm. because the Bills had such a great season? Well, I guess you can probably tell by my smile uh, how, 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 how grateful we are to be remembered, first of all. But the, the friendship part of it, uh, us texting during the game, you know, we have a little group text that, that during the games, uh, we, we, we go at it pretty good, uh, but we're all so joyful and happy, uh, you know, for, for the team and for the kids because, um, you know, you get, you get to do this one time. And uh, to see, to see um, a great place, you know, great city, great team, um, great owners um, get a chance to to enjoy what we enjoy and to see how great the people are. Even though it's on a limited basis for the, for the guys right now, they when 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 everything opens back up and they get out in public and they and they go around Buffalo and get a chance to to get the pats on the back that they so deserve. Um, they're they're gonna see and and have a memory like we have because 30 years ago when we lost the Super Bowl, uh, so uh, the first Super Bowl uh, this year makes me you know, 30 years for that. Uh, we never knew that we were going to go back three times in a row, but it's a tremendous honor and feeling. Uh, and we, we're, just, we're just living it up right now. We're enjoying it. You know, that's all we got is our great stories and, and happy to have people to help tell them now. Yeah, I, I love um, the attention that you guys did get. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as, as the game has evolved and a lot of players go from place to place to place, you know, um, it's very rare that you've got, uh, I mean, even a core group of guys that stay with the same team and um, the love that you guys have for, for each other and, and the connections that you still have to this day, I think it's just, that's a great story in, its, in of itself. Uh, because, you know, Coach, you, you talked about this a little bit earlier. Coach, he does, he always preaches about, about loving each other and, and loving, um, you know, loving your teammate, loving your organization, loving your coaching. And uh, he's not, you know, he doesn't wear pink like you do, but, <laughs> but Coach McDermott is not a shy to yeah. love around and, and talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. so even for a tough coach that, you know, like you said, have to get, get tough, uh, he talks a lot about, about love. And you saw that, the relationship that, that Josh has with, you know, Stefan Diggs, and you saw along on the sidelines mm -hmm. how much they genuinely like each other. Uh, uh, that's so it's great and it was great to see that that's what they have to look forward to the example that that you and Bruce and Jim and Thurman and and Daryl like all you guys just seeing you guys um having that relationship something that I think is just great for them to see this is something that we can you know look forward to as mm -hmm. our careers um having these teammates to be you know a real family for many many years to come no matter you know where we go in life yeah, our, our kids, you know, even the kids, you know, you, you, you guys probably don't think about that now, but, you know, guys in that locker room, they have kids the same age or whatever that know each other, and they're going to grow up friends, you know, so it's, it's even bigger than, you know, the locker room. It's, it's about, again, growing old together, and um, as we do grow older together, you know, uh, you start, guys start dropping off one by one or whatever kind of thing, you know, and um, our group has stayed together, and other teams, believe it or not, other teams wish – Guys talk about us, have always talked about the Buffalo Bills, how close we are. Guys wish they had that locker room camaraderie. And, again, that's a, that's a great tribute to, to Coach Levy and the general managers, you know, Bill Polian and, and Fergie that we had back in the day or whatever, uh, bringing us together, like-minded people with like-minded goals, and, and, and it just carried over. Um, and, if you, know, you know, same with Coach Levy. When he's around, it's still our team. Coach Levy is still coaching. He will always be coaching. We're going to be his son's uh, students. <laughs> that's so true and and yeah, i yeah. hope that i hope that this team and and the bills for the next few years the the core group of guys who are a part of this team can really be known for that as well and, and known for having two eras of teams that were really close and tight knit but before we wrap up cornelius you you've had some of those tough losses but you've also experienced the high highs of some really great wins that were able to get you guys into the super bowl multiple times what do you hope that this current Buffalo Bills team can learn from this tough loss that they've just faced and take it into next year uh, with a sense of wanting more and with a sense of, of a taste in their mouth that 
they left this season with unfinished business? Well, you know, failure is a part of life. Um, and we all fall, you know, we all fail. Um, it's how you get back up and what do you do? What do you learn from it? Um, where do you go from there? Um, are you gonna, you know, bring, you know, bring each other along? Or are you gonna be selfish? The big part of it to what we learned, I think was the biggest part of it was a common selfless, thinking of self, you know, not thinking of self, you know, being selfless. And, and uh, I think that was the thing that carried us, even though we, we kept failing, we kept failing, but now, I don't look at it so much as a failure. Now, it was a great success that we had over our careers, uh, over those four losses that we had in the Super Bowl. So what do you take from it? How do you learn from it? Um, just like life, you know, we fall, we get up, and what do you learn from it? And, and um, every day trying to become not only a better football player, but a better person in this world and do good for this world. And that's where I know I am in my personal life. Uh, and that's where I hope that, you know, the young football team takes it and grow it and, and become a better football team. See, that, Maddie, that is why he is the deacon, because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> motivational and such positive thinking. How, how I haven't that? always, you know, I, 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 you know, I first admit, you know, I've had my bump in the road, and, and but it, had it not been for the grace of God, I wouldn't be here talking to you all, you know. Um, I'm so grateful and, and blessed and thankful that I, I can't do that but praise, you know, that, that's, that's where I am in my life. That's me. Can't have the highs, not the lows. <laughs> That's right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we got to so have grateful. somewhere to climb up. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we're so grateful we have you as a part of our Bills Legends family. It's been so fun being able to stay in touch with you guys through the season, even virtually. I know if it was a normal season, you would have all been at <laughs> several games on the sidelines because even last year, I remember looking around and being like, "Oh my gosh." Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's like seven players from the nineties teams that are here right now on the sideline. Like, you know, this team is good when you have people yeah. in the Super Bowl team guys coming back and coming to Buffalo to watch this team. So I hope that next year that'll be a regular sighting on the sidelines. All of you star players coming back and watching the guys play. It's can I wear pink? Can I wear pink in the winter in Buffalo? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And if you get bored, Cornelius, on the short drive, yeah. short drive from where you're living now, so you know, you got nothing to do someday. Come, vi come visit Terry and I, and in, uh, in Florida. Oh, right. oh, thank you so much. That that means a lot. Um, wow. I appreciate that, and, and, and my wife and I, we will definitely do that. Um, I, I love Boca Raton. Of course, I was just up there last week at the mall. <laughs> I like to shop, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a shopaholic. So you bought the I shirt. That's the where you, get, yeah. that's where you <laughs> yeah. got the shirt. <laughs> well, thank you we so much for will. your time today. We really enjoyed having you here, and it's been, like I said, is it, this year has been so much fun, and I'm glad that you were able to enjoy it as well. Um, and we look forward to, to having another, another fun year. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Thank you for having me on. All right. Thanks, Cornelius. All right. Thanks, Matt. The Buffalo Bills are proud to partner with National Grid in promoting the Safety First initiative, where every time a Bills safety makes a tackle at home, National Grid donated $50 to the 100 Club of Buffalo in support of first responders and their families. Thanks to their contributions, Safety First helped raise $7,900 during the 2020 season. National Grid reminds you to put safety first in your home with this easy tip. Check the batteries in your carbon monoxide detectors regularly. So Kim, as we turn the page to the off season, how does your daily life change for you? What does an off season look like for you? I know probably some of your attention turns to a hockey season as we are now full force into the NHL season coming off an exciting Sabres win last night. It is, but again, it's different than a normal season. So actually, <laughs> Uh, for yes, you know, listen, I, I went back to Florida. That's where my home is, where my, my resident of Florida. So after the season ended, um, I did come back to Florida here. Haven't been here since Thanksgiving. So still, I, I tell people the time, like some people forget uh, up in Western New York that I have a whole nother life here in Florida. I have an office, <laughs> I've got staff here. Uh, and so they were happy to see, to see us back in Florida. I haven't seen us in a long time catching up on just a lot of things like my I just realized my daughter's wedding that 
got postponed, um, her website, like it had expired. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, no. it, so it was just like, you know, just those things that you, a lot of things got put on hold. And so now just kind of cleaning up some of those things, kind of doing a lot of the, the motherly wife and, and wedding planner and all those other things not related to sports. And then of course, like you said, we still um, obviously have a saver season, um, but the saver season this year, I am not even allowed in their area. So there is, you know, a lot of restrictions there. So honestly, I'm not really um, able to even be really there uh, at all. So being here in Florida and, you know, basically really being a, a, just a fan watching it on TV and then just had, you know, earlier today, just had our catch up meeting uh, with Kevin Adams and, and coach Kruger. So just, you know, talking through that. So, yeah, so still a lot of, a lot of uh, hockey to be played, just, just a little less work this year than a normal season without fans and, and the way their shortened schedule is. But, um, but yeah, I, I just go back and listen, people think that there's a big long break because you know, there is no football, but I will tell you on the, on the business side, this is where all the planning happens is in the off season. So, you know, when it's in season, it's the, about the execution, as you know, Maddie, right. You just, you, you know what mm -hmm. you got to do and you just, you do it and it's the output and it depends on the games and things like that. But in the off season is when you start really planning the budgets, you know, just planning for the season. Uh, just, you know, obviously we've got the draft, the combine, the draft, is it going to be virtual? I, you know, we haven't gotten official word yet on, on the draft, but, um, and then of course, Maddie, I got to go to the Super Bowl. I've been to every Super Bowl since no, the No, don't team. do it. I don't know. I'm going. Somebody, somebody said to me, well, of course you have to commit, like, you know, we, we have to commit <laughs> back in September, right? With, with hotel rooms, you had to guarantee and suites and all this stuff. And so, Someone asked me like, hey, you know, we need to talk about Super Bowl planning, like, you know, and I was like, can you just give me a day? Can you just like give me a day? I'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? And so, you know, I was still like on the fence, but honestly, if, if it wasn't here in Florida and I'm already here, it's literally like a three hour, three and a half hour drive. So um, we've got some, you know, some of our, our great partners that are gonna be attending. So. I am going to go. I haven't missed it yet. Um, you know, Norma Hunt, you know, owner of, of the Kansas City, she's been to every single Super Bowl. I'm never going to beat her record. I mean, I just not old. I mean, just I'm too old actually to ever beat her record. Um, but, you know, I would say thinking, you know what, I'm sure there's a lot of losses where her team wasn't in it as well, but she went to every Super Bowl. If she can do it, I can do it. So I'm going to I'm going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> what does the Super Bowl look like for you when, I mean, unfortunately, we haven't been in the Super Bowl since you've been a, an owner of the Buffalo Bills. And hopefully that's coming within the next few years. And I think it's definitely possible with us just being a win away from making it there. But does the Super Bowl look way different this year because it's, I'm, I mean, we're in a pandemic, there's still a Super Bowl, but I would imagine a lot of the meetings, a lot of the things that you go to on a, on a regular Super Bowl weekend or Super Bowl week are now virtual or not happening at yeah, all. What, what does it look like for you from that it, perspective? It, yeah, I mean, it's just the game. I mean, it, it really is. This year, a lot of the things I can do at home, like you said, virtual honors is going to be on TV. Um, there is uh, something called First and Future, which is kind of like this this tech uh, contest that they usually I usually attend. That's going to be all virtual. So a lot of virtuals, as you know, even opening night is really virtual. <laughs> so a lot of virtual things that are happening this year. Um, but I will tell you, in a normal year, I would say it's probably one of my most busiest three days packed in with everything from, from meetings to events to, you know, partners at the league that you meet with partners, you know, of the bills you meet with um, just, you know, a lot of people that you haven't seen. It's just, it's um, always, it's so busy this year, you know, that's why I say I kind of look on the bright side, like maybe this wasn't the year we were supposed to have it with the way that our fan base loves mm -hmm. their bills. You know, I would hate to have had it in a year where you could only a few would have been able to go. So um, I'm looking on the bright side. I'll be there at the Super Bowl. I promise I won't enjoy it. <laughs> um, and I don't even know. You know, I, I'm, I'm torn, right? Because 
I should be rooting for the AFC, right? Because, you know, that's our conference. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, we've been so many Tom Brady's, it's like you, you want to kind of root against them sometimes. Um, I don't know, but having been beaten to go to the Super Bowl by by the AFC uh, Kansas City Chiefs, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I want to root for them. So I don't know. I'm right. torn. I think maybe I'm just going to be like Switzerland and just kind of be neutral, <laughs> just eat whatever is there in the suite, look forward to the halftime show and kind of give it call it a day yeah you could just hope for a good game because I feel the there same way I'm like I don't want either team to win I want yeah. I want the Bills to win I'm not cheering for either team I guess I just hope for for a decent game but you got to be a part of something super cool uh you were on a zoom call where you got to yeah. surprise some of our healthcare workers from Western New York with some Super Bowl tickets. How did how did that go? And I watched a little bit of it. It looked like they were so so excited uh, to receive something like that. Yeah, no, they they were so excited. Listen, even though that we weren't in, we're not in the Super Bowl, and this year it's COVID. It's such a big game. I mean, it, it is the premier event uh, in the world, and for the ability for some of these healthcare workers, you know, they're vaccinated. They're um, they've been working, I'm sure, many long hours um, fighting a, a virus that, you know, we're, we're still kind of still right in the middle and the heart of for, for almost a year now. Um, so I think, you know, I just, I loved it. I love giving them that surprise and it's so well deserved. You know, listen, anytime you can just take your mind off of of the things that are happening in the world, not to say that they don't matter, but, or you want to forget about them, but just to be able to refresh, gets a little warm weather in, you know, take in Tampa, go to this, be, say that you were able to go to Super Bowl. Um, it's, it's, it's still a great event and something I was just really happy in those days, just so all of them so deserved and they were so excited to go. Yeah, it looked like they were so excited and so cool that the NFL is reserving um, some of the seats for vaccinated healthcare workers. What a cool and special thing yeah. to do. I mean, those people are so deserving of that and so much more for fighting a virus and being on the front lines that like you said mm -hmm. we're almost a year into this uh, and hopefully yeah. we can get out of it uh, a lot a lot quick more quicker than uh, we've been in it so yeah. well the best thing too was that they were nominated by their co-workers so you know it's just like I said listen everybody loves winning something right and to be nominated and and to win something um and especially with the Super Bowl, it just, it's got to make them feel great that they can be a part of that. And kind of, like I said, take a, a couple of days off to just refresh and, and uh, take their minds off of, of all the responsibilities that they've had this past year. So um, hopefully I'll see them down there somewhere and looking yeah. forward to, looking forward to the end of the game, Maddie. I am looking forward to the end of the Super Bowl because that means that we are all O and O and Next season begins. I love it. It's going to fly by. The off seasons always fly by. I feel like I blink and it's the combine and then it's free agency. And then it's like, oh, the draft is in two weeks. Uh, I don't feel like I've had any off season at all, but that's why we work in the NFL because it's really a 365 day thing. It's not a 16 week thing or 17 no. week thing by any means, but well, and we wouldn't really want it to be. No, not at all. <laughs> mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. Kim, appreciate the time. Um, good to see that you're back in Florida and busy already I mean you deserve a vacation as well <laughs> back in my office here so well you know like you said we still have a lot of things to do and I don't consider this a job anyway so I feel like I am on vacation some days I'm in Florida I'm home I mean what more could I want talking to you getting to talk to you, Cornelius and other the great guests that we've had it's not work at all so I, I'm, it's, it's a vacation every day I completely agree. That's a great way to put it. But that's all we've got for this episode. Right. Stay tuned because we've got one more coming up where we really will put a bow on the season and look forward to next season. So thanks to all of our listeners for joining in. And thanks, Kim, for being the co-host. All right. Bye, Maddie. See you next Bye, week. Bye, Kim. Yep. See you next week.